this video, I'm going to provide just a real basic overview as far as the interface of GIMP itself before diving in and actually starting working with all of the different elements of GIMP. So when you first install GIMP, this is pretty much what you're going to see here. Now a couple of things here, similar to other art programs, number one, I want to draw your attention. You have that main menu bar going across the top here with your standard file, edit, view, layers, etc. Now right below it here, you can see this is the GIMP toolbox here. Now you can actually come and kind of tug and pull on the side here because of the panels that are also grouped here. Like other art software, it's a little hard to see, but you do have that small arrow down in the lower right hand corner that indicates for a tool that you have additional sub tools that are grouped with that tool. So just for example, you can see when I hover over the paintbrush tool, you're also seeing what is also in this group here. To access the group tools, you click, you hold, and you can come through and select what you'd like to work with. Finally, you also in the toolbox area, you can see that you have the foreground and the background color available here. You also have the area, the arrows here that will actually flip your foreground and background color. And then down in the corner here, you also have setting it to more of like a default black and white for foreground and black, background color. Now let's go ahead here. Let's jump back up here to your main menu bar here. Now, before we actually make a file here, I like to jump into the edit menu for folks who are new to the software and draw your attention to the preference area. The preferences is a nice area that if there's anything that you want to tweak as far as the main interface you're seeing here, this is where you can do it. So for example here, you can set the system resources. Some of the things that I'd like to point out here is for instance, as far as interface is concerned. Some students, uh, they want to enlarge as far as what is appearing over here in the layers panel, as far as the thumbnail, uh, any sort of navigation. This is where you would do that, where you can set, you know, for instance, your default layer and channel preview size. You can see that you have multiple options here. The only thing to point out to you is that if you make changes in the user interface or theme areas or appearance, often you'll get a little pop-up from GIMP saying that you just need to restart the software. I also too like to point out to students regarding the different themes. You're going to see most of my videos, I like the dark contrast. I do have some students though that do, for instance, like light. Personally, I think it's too bright. I do you think GIMP kind of hurts as far as you can see on the toolbox here? It makes the toolbox difficult to see. Even with the system, I still just feel like the gray's a little too light on the light color there. So most of the time you're going to see me working in the dark mode. Just some other things here too. Uh, you know, you have image window, you can set as far as what the space bar controls, also as far as your zoom and resize behavior. As you become more comfortable with the software, you may want to come back into these preferences and tweak even further. But again, kind of starting out here with GIMP, I would say just as far as the interface, what size do you want your previews to be, and also looking at what type of theme you would like to have there. Outside of that, you're welcome to play with some of the other items as well, as far as the icons, your tool con uh, configurations, so on and so forth. Really though, I'm going to stick with the default to get folks started in the software package. So I'll go ahead and say, okay. Now I didn't get the pop-up saying, hey, you need to restart the software because pretty much everything I kept as the default. Now, so that you can actually see the rest of the interface in action, I am going to go under File, and we're going to make just a new document here. I'm not concerned about as far as creating the new document here. I'm just going to go with the default and just say, okay, so we have something in the interface here. So here we go. So you have a default document that you've now created here. So as you can see, this main center area is your working environment here. Up at the top, too, 
uh, just to point out, this uh, is a little thumbnail preview. You can have multiple files open in GIMP. They will appear as thumbnails going across the top here. You hit the little X, it's going to close out your file. If you made changes to the file, GIMP will ask you, do you want to save? So I'll go ahead and reopen that. Now on uh, your left hand side here, right below the toolbox here, you do have several tabs here as far as device, the image itself, options pertaining to the specific tool that is active. So because I have the paintbrush active, that's why you're seeing all of these options here. As we continue on, I will go more in depth on these, but just be aware this is where that is located. And then you also have the history panel that you can go back through and undo as you see fit, either if you want to get rid of a specific point in time or if you want to just clear back to a specific point. So now moving from the left side, let's go take a look at the right side over here. This is another area you'll be working with frequently. For instance, here by default across the top here, you have built in pre-created brushes. You can make your own brush brushes if you prefer. You can also download brushes. We have pre-installed patterns into the software. Like the brush counterpart, you can create your own patterns. You also have a preview of the fonts that are available to you as far as design. We are going to talk in the future about different types of fonts and typefaces. You also have, as far as just an overall history over time, and then the specific brush editor itself. When we get into the brushes, I'll talk about that a little bit more. Just to point out here, I will use this section as an example for you. You can rearrange the interface, or if you prefer to have free floating tabs, you can do that as well. You would want to actually click on the tab name. So I'll use brushes as an example for this. If you click, hold, and drag, you see now how brushes is free floating. There's no right or wrong on this. I have had students who they really enjoy or prefer working with the free floating tabs. I have students that prefer to have everything locked on the sides of their interface. You're not going to see me using free floating. But let's say it's, a, I like to demonstrate this because let's say you did this by accident. You just click on the tab element again where it says brushes. And it might be a little hard to see, but you can see how I'm getting like this blue outline on the side here. And what I can do then is I can just snap this right back into place here. And then I can go ahead and rearrange in the tab there. It can be a little bit touchy, but that's one way you can get back there. Down at the bottom here, though, um, we are going to talk about this in the next video here, but the layers panel. This is probably one of the most important and kind of core elements across different graphic design programs and even videography programs as well, is the concept of layering assets to create the overall piece. So be aware of that. That's where that is located. Uh, you will be working heavily with that in really not just GIMP. Uh, the Adobe Suite also makes heavy use of it. Inkscape does. Uh, DaVinci does as far as video editing. All of them rely heavily on the layers concept. So we will talk about that a little bit more later on. So that goes over kind of the basics of introducing you to GIMP's interface as far as working and locating different elements within the interface that you might be working with.